Hello and welcome back to another University Deep Dive. Today we're looking at the master at a master's in real estate and development at the University of Buffalo. And to help us out, we've got student Matea Masola. Did I say that right, Matea? That's correct. You got it. Okay. I said it a couple of times before, but I just wanted to make sure. Um, so anyway, uh, we're excited to look at your program and to get us started, let's turn it over to Spencer. Yeah, thanks, Sam. And Matea, it's really nice to meet you first off and thank you for your time. And it's really valuable as we explore what it means to study real estate development in a master's program at the University of Buffalo. I think your insights will be really incredibly valuable. Uh, you know, as we start, I always like this first question in these university deep dives. And that is, as you look at um, a, what does it mean to you, I guess, to be, to study real estate at the graduate level at the University of Buffalo? So I guess that goes, this kind of goes back to, you know, why I chose the program. So what really intrigued me about the University of Buffalo program is that it is housed in the School of Architecture and Planning. Um, and I was really intrigued by the fact that a number of the electives are taken with architecture and planning students. And I liked that there's kind of a design planning bent to the program. Um, so I'm personally interested in affordable housing development. That's what I'm gonna be doing post-graduation and community development. And so I wanted some of my classes to kind of have that, that bend and that itch. Um, so that was really exciting and attractive to me. Um, interesting, interesting. So uh, for for purposes of, of our viewers here, where are you from and, and how did you come to, to learn about the, the program at the University of Buffalo? So I grew up in Rochester, New York, which is about an hour and 10 minutes away. Um, sure. I've done the commute a number of times now. Um, and I discovered the program when I was doing an internship with a firm in Rochester. And the University at Buffalo had started a kind of affordable housing initiative within the School of Architecture and Planning. And um, the CEO of the firm had kind of told me about it seemed really interesting because that's the path, you know, I'm looking to go down. Um, and as I looked more into it and I liked that that was a focus of the school as a whole and not just the development program. Yeah, that's, that's great. So talk to us nuts and bolts. What, um, how many credit hours to complete the program? Um, what's the length of the program in terms of semesters? Uh, is it full-time? Is it part-time? Uh, help us understand what it takes, I guess, to, to graduate with a master's in real estate development. So the program is three semesters if you do it full time, which is what I'm doing. So I'm in my last semester now. Um, right. There are some folks who are doing it part time who, you know, are working full time and doing um, the program part time. So that is a possibility. But I would say the majority of students are doing it on that full time track. Um, and the three semesters allows you to do an internship during the summer between your spring and fall semester and get that kind of real world experience. And the program is about 48 credit hours. Got it. Okay. And does matriculation happen each fall or, or can students come in in the spring and start their three semesters? I, how does that work? And, and I guess as it relates to admissions as well, or is it rolling admissions or, or are there, are there specific dates in which admissions occur? Can I help us understand, yeah, the timing of the program? So the admissions is rolling, of course. You know, it's better to apply earlier if you're interested in scholarship. So um, I went right into my graduate program, and I think I applied in fall of my senior year of undergrad um, and did it really, really early. In terms of full-time matriculation, it, it starts in the fall, and then you end December of that, like, following year. Interesting. Now you, you came straight from undergrad. It sounds like is that the case. Yes. I how, how common is that amongst your peers at the university of Buffalo that how many have come in with some work experience and how many are coming straight from undergrad? I would say it's about 50, 50, the, my cohort, I would say it's more, um, students who are coming right out of undergrad or maybe took, you know, a year or two off. And then this current cohort that just started this fall, I would say it's, more heavily um, folks who took a lot, a significant amount of time or kind of mid career and are either pivoting to real estate or, you know, are in real estate and they just wanted to kind of, um, kind of firm up their knowledge and take that next step. Great. Now it's, it's a program in real estate development. Mm -hmm. um, and you mentioned a, a, there's, there's a, a great focus on the design side of this. What about those who have an interest, say in the finance side or, or, 
asset management side of real estate? Is, is there, is there an opportunity for them to study within the program or is it truly focused on a real estate development track? It definitely runs the gamut. So I would say in terms of the required courses, the real estate courses, you know, we have, a, we have the finance, of course, we have like construction management, market analysis, an overview of the development process. And then um, our final capstone this semester is, you know, we're working with one other student and we're basically, we're coming up with a ground up proposal. Um, and then we're going to be presenting it to alum and professionals in the field in kind of a shark tank style. So it's definitely, um, if you are interested in more the finance side of things, um, this program is definitely still available to you. Interesting. Now, um, you said 48 credit hours. What proportion of those credit hours would be, say, core courses uh, that you're required to take versus uh, optional courses uh, that, that, that gives you some flexibility? Um, how does that break out? I would say it's about 70, 30, probably 70% core, 30% elective. So depending on the semester, it'll be four core courses and one elective or three core courses and two electives. And what, what sort of electives are, are open and available to you? So I took a course, blanking on the name right now, but a course about historic preservation um, with a woman who owns like a local historic preservation firm. Um, yeah. And then I also took like a course about inclusive design. So looking at kind of beyond accessible design, what we can be doing to design for all populations and all groups. Um, and uni the University at Buffalo is actually known for their research and initiatives on inclusive design. So that was, that was really interesting, yeah. Great, so, so that's, call that um, the coursework. Uh, what about outside the classroom? What opportunities are there for you to expand your career, uh, maybe with clubs, speaker, groups and, and so forth. Talk, talk to us about, about those opportunities. So given the fact that I started the program last fall in the midst of COVID, um, you know, my experience is definitely unique. I don't think anyone at any other cohort will have the same, you know, experience as ours. So, yeah. you know, it was definitely a struggle, I would say the first semester to connect with folks and since our program is relatively new, it's only about five years old, we didn't have a student run real estate club. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a bunch of us were feeling a little disconnected. And we decided if there was ever a time to start a student club, it was now. Um, so last spring, we, you know, went through the process. And now this fall, we've officially started this student run real estate club. It is open to not just master's in real estate development students, but other graduate students, since there are a number of MBAs who are interested in real estate and also undergrads. So we've started a club um, to kind of enhance, you know, networking experiences, bringing in professionals to give, you know, educational lectures and do Q and A and talk about topics that maybe we don't have the time to get to in class. And down the line in the future, we're hoping to do, you know, student treks to, you know, New York City or Chicago um, and go visit projects and the like. Excellent. I love that initiative. Uh, so you said the program's relatively new, mm -hmm. uh, five years, we're, we're 2021 right now. So, um, uh, I, I guess the first question I have is what is the typical size of a graduating class mm -hmm. and, uh, talk to us about the, the growing, uh, strength of the alumni base and, and to what degree you, you are connecting with, with alumni, either alumni of the university of Buffalo or specifically of your program. So in terms of average class size, they've kept it pretty small intentionally um, to about 15 to 20 students. So I'd say my cohort is about 15. I think this incoming cohort is about 20. Um, so our real estate classes are really, really small, which has been nice. You know, we have gotten to know each other well because of that, um, especially since the club started um, in terms of, you know, alumni connection. So all students are paired with two mentors, um, one of which is kind of like a someone a little bit more seasoned, a little bit more established in their career. And then someone who's kind of a younger trailblazer really early in their career, who maybe are, you know, two to three years out of the program. So the mentors are, some of them are alumni of the real estate development program, and some of them are just alumni of UB in general who've gone into real estate, who heard about the program and, 
you know, want to help folks in this program um, and, you know, move them along in their careers. Good, good. And talk to us about career uh, opportunities coming out of, of the program. Um, first, in terms of geography, mm-hmm. uh, wh- where do most graduates end up geographically? Uh, what type of role do, do most graduates end up in? Um, and to what, what degree there is support from either the school or the alumni in, in that career, in that job search? So um, in terms of kind of geographic location, I would say a, a good portion, you know, end up in the Western New York region as many like is what often happens with kind of regional schools. And then there's definitely a good portion of students who end up in the New York City area as well. Um, and then, you know, a handful of students who've kind of gone across country. So, I, you know, I have a friend in my cohort who's looking at the West Coast um, and that's where he hopes to be. In terms of alumni and their role in helping students get jobs, I would say between the alumni connections and our career advisors who are available to help us, you know, network, review job offers, help us get internships. They're very, very involved in job placement and helping students do that. And so far, um, all students have been placed in, you know, real estate or kind of an allied field within six months of graduation. Excellent. Congrats on that. And, and yeah. again, development is, is generally the ty- development firms or the types of firms, or uh, do you get a mixed? Yeah. What, it's what, what would you say is the breakdown of that? Yeah, it's definitely a mix development, um, kind of asset management acquisitions. Um, there is definitely, at least in my cohort, you know, an entrepreneurial bent there are a lot of folks who either want to go start their own firm or kind of doing small projects in addition to their full-time job um so yeah that's kind of where most people are ending up great now stepping back you'd mentioned um uh, earlier that uh, a a good share or some share of of your class and other classes are um part-time what would you say is the breakdown between those who are going full-time versus those that are going part-time? I would say in my cohort, it's probably about 75, 25, 75% full-time, 25% part-time. Yeah. And, and those who go part-time or, or full-time for the, that matter, uh, are classes in person. And I know we're in COVID, but you know, imagine we weren't, uh, <laughs> Um, is, is it a in-person program exclusively? Is there a combination of, of remote and in-person? Um, how, how does that break down? So from my understanding, the classes were all in person prior to COVID moving forward, you know, that may change. There may be more flexibility, but that's my understanding. Yeah. Now you mentioned you're from Rochester. Uh, Mm -hmm. are you making the commute even today? From Rochester to Buffalo for for your program, or or have you moved to Buffalo? So I was, since my classes were mostly virtual this past year, this past school year, I was in Rochester, and now I've I've moved to Buffalo because um, for my last semester, and also because I've accepted a, a full time job here in Buffalo. Oh, great! Congrats on that. Yeah. Um, so the reason I ask, it's a, a somewhat a leading question. Um, I would imagine many of our listeners are in either in New York or in the surrounding region. Um, nevertheless, for for those who are unfamiliar with what Western New York and up, maybe upstate New York are like, what is it? What is it like to live up there? Um, Weather wise, activities wise, those who who say I'm going to move to Buffalo and and go to uh, the, the Masters in Real Estate Development program at the University of Buffalo, what what they might what might they expect, both the the good and maybe a little bit of the bad. I mean, so I grew up in upstate New York, so I'm used to the snow, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> used to those those you know long winter months. Um, but what I really love about upstate and why you know I didn't mind staying here for school. I also stayed upstate for my undergrad, um, was just like upstate New York is just stunning. It's really just beautiful. We have fantastic parks, great place for skiing, you know, snowboarding, hiking, mountain biking. Um, there's beautiful little like historic towns to visit. So that's kind of what's drawn me, um, to staying here. And 
I think something that's very surprising to a lot of people, Buffalo is actually a huge food city beyond wings. <laughs> of course, I did wings. Um, there was just Wing Fest two weeks ago, actually. Um, oh, cool. There's a really great food scene. There's also a really fantastic like craft beer scene, if that's your thing. Um, so there's there's more going on than people think. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, I, I can echo that. I went, I, I did grad school in upstate, and uh, it it's beautiful, beautiful, and the people are great, and uh, the the weather can get a bit treacherous uh, yeah. in the depths of winter, but um, there's also beauty to that as well. So, and anyway, Matea, thank you so much for your time. This has been incredibly valuable, and I'll turn it back over to Sam to take us out. Yes, uh, we'd like to thank Matea so much for uh, joining us here today. And to you, the readers, thank you for taking the time to watch today's deep dive interview and the best of luck to you and to your adventure in commercial real estate.